A lot of people don't realize this is happening because the fossil fuel industry doesn't want you to know. Many, many coal stations, gas generators are losing money. The industry is losing billions. It's true. Maybe not every part of the industry, but it is in many countries. This is all coming down to the cost of renewables plummeting. But now the cost has just declined by 30% within the last few weeks. This will bankrupt many coal and gas companies. It's going to happen very, very quickly. By the end of 2023, we will see a completely new paradigm emerge. In 2022, solar panels were installed at the fastest rate in the history of the human race. In fact, in many countries around the world, solar became an enormous disruptor of fossil fuels, whether that's coal, whether that's gas, whether that's even nuclear. It's disrupting them at an incredible pace, but that pace is about to accelerate at an insane level, the likes of which we've never, ever seen before. And this all comes down to one key reason. The cost is about to fall through the floor. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Welcome back, everyone else. Welcome to 2023. What a year it's going to be this year. One of the key reasons is, is news like this. This is awesome. This is the kind of thing I just love to see. You know how this all, this all ties into everything. This ties into making the world a better place. This ties into having cheaper electricity, not only for people in the first world, but people living in the, I know it's politically incorrect to call it this now, but living in the third world. This makes energy, makes it possible. Yes, it's not going to be immediately possible for some, but this decrease in price, which is about to occur, will have a massive impact globally. In addition to that, this makes it cheaper to run your EV. This just makes, it makes everything just awesome, seriously. So what am I talking about? Well, there is a price war going on right now. And I mean a literal war, not a spiritual war, not a figurative war, a literal price war going on. The biggest Chinese solar manufacturers in the world, which are the biggest manufacturers of solar in the world, period, are bidding against each other because, well, we are in a global recession and that has reduced the price of commodities, meaning it's now much cheaper for them to manufacture their panels, meaning they've reduced their prices by 30% on average. That means the price of solar has come down over the past 10 years by around 90%. It's now cheaper than ever to get solar. Now, it may take a few months for those cost decreases to be passed on to consumers in the US, consumers in Europe, consumers around the world. In Australia, it's going to happen very, very quickly. For some reason, it just does here. Solar is insanely cheap here in Australia. We're really, really lucky. But it will happen. It will happen everywhere. It is simply a matter of time. What does this mean? This means coal and gas, fossil fuels will die faster than ever. It also means Europe will benefit massively from cheaper solar prices as the continent diversifies energy sources to deal with reduced gas supplies from Russia. Now, I'm going to guess Russia is probably thinking, well, when this war is over, we'll go back to selling our gas to, you know, Western Europe and it'll all be fine. We'll go back to making all that money again. I don't think it's going to happen. I actually think this has meant that Europe has had to change what it does. And one of those things it's been doing is installing solar at an insane pace. Now the price is going to go down even more. What do you think is going to happen? More and more solar goes in in Europe, more and more transition movement away from reliance on Russia, meaning the less fossil fuels being burnt and cheaper energy. Yeah, it's going to take a little while for those savings to come, but they will. It's simply a matter of time. So a slump in solar panel prices in China, which is by far the world's largest producer of panels, will stimulate demand globally, particularly in Europe and the United States. But when it comes to Europe, they're facing an unprecedented energy crisis, according to analysts. Well, what are they going to do? Just install batteries, solar panels? You're probably thinking, oh, no, 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 Electric Viking, you're wrong on this. You're wrong. They can't just install solar panels. Well, sorry, but they are. I've reported on this. It's happening at the fastest rate in history right now. 
Uh, in fact, check out my video on the actual facts. The numbers of installations last year were through the roof. I'll put a link in the description below to the video I made about that. Amid falling costs of the key material, polysilicon, due to excess supply, leading Chinese manufacturers, Longi Green Energy Technology, TCL Zongwan, and Tongwei Solar slashed prices by around 30%, the China Silicon Industry Association said last week. Slowing demand due to the surge in COVID-19 cases that has affected solar power installations and excess supply at the year end have prompted some manufacturers to cut prices. The increasing cost competitiveness of solar power generation driven by expanded production and upstream cost reduction will help promote renewable energy across the world. Shanghai-based brokerage firm BOCI Securities said in a recent report. This is important. This matters. This will help us transform the world faster and faster away from fossil fuels to renewable energy. China makes and supplies more than 80% of the world's photovoltaic panels, according to the International Energy Agency, more than 80%. You can see how this is going to be a game changer. The country will add at least 570 gigawatts of wind and solar power in the 14th five-year plan period from 2021 to 2025 as it strives to achieve its carbon neutral goal by 2060 when non-fossil fuel sources will account for 80 percent of its total energy mix now i actually think that china will hit 100 percent renewables by around 2040 to 2045 possibly even quicker than that i know they're not saying that's going to happen but i believe that will happen the key reason is simply economics in china well, they're very focused on a return on their investment. Will they be getting that from their coal plants in 2040, in 2045, compared to the renewable energy sector? And absolutely not. The renewable energy companies will be making boatloads of money because it's simply much cheaper to run and operate renewables. And those costs will continue to decline. We're saying it's cheaper today, but what's happened with the cost of solar, the cost of wind, the cost of batteries over the past 20, 30 years? They've come down, not all the time, but almost every year, the costs have decreased significantly when you add it all together. Those cost declines will continue. Increased efficiency in factories. Now think about this, right? If the cost of solar continues to decline, the cost of energy continues to go down, it's a virtuous cycle. I mean, it means the cost of manufacturing to manufacture those products declines because number one cost to manufacture a solar panel is electricity in combination with the cost to mine the raw materials. The mining of the raw materials cost goes down once you have electric tractors, electric machinery, which runs on solar energy. See how it just goes around in a circle, around, 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 around. The cost decreases continue to compound. And remember, for coal power stations to actually make a profit, they need to run at more than 70%. They really do that now in many countries around the world because renewables are actually undercutting them. Following an unprecedented energy crisis last year, due to the reduction of gas supplies by Russia, the European Union is expected to diversify away from fossil fuels at an even faster pace. Europe is estimated to add a record-breaking 41.4 gigawatts of solar power in 2022. That's 47% more than the previous year, and another 53.6 gigawatts in 2023, to bring total solar capacity to 26.2 gigawatts, according to Solar Power Europe, which represents over 280 organizations across the entire solar sector on the continent. But those numbers are wrong because those numbers came out before the price decreased by 30%. Decrease the price by 30%, you massively increase the demand. I mean, that's what's going to happen. You're talking about 41.4 gigawatts last year. To say that they're only going to increase by another 53 gigawatts this year when the price is 30% lower, that's ridiculous, especially considering the current energy crisis. I reckon you're going to see another doubling. I think we're going to increase solar in Europe by around 80 gigawatts in 2023. Now, let me know if you agree or disagree. But if you disagree, let me know why that is in the comment section. The lower prices of solar components in China will further promote the expansion of renewable energy as over half of the solar panels the EU imported in 2022 were from China, a 
according to Frank Horgwitz, founder of the Asia Europe Clean Energy Solar Advisory. I think, in fact, it's closer to 70%. Lower prices will indeed stimulate fresh demand, not only in Europe, but also in other important markets across Southeast Asia, the Middle East, and Africa. I mean, obviously, it makes the most sense in the Middle East and Africa, where they have a boatload of deserts, a boatload of sun. I mean, way more sun than they do in Europe, clearly. The US is likely to be the exception, claim some experts, as Washington has imposed steep import tariffs on Chinese solar panels and banned solar energy components from China's Yinyang region over concerns of forced labor. Chinese solar panel manufacturers will continue facing import restrictions imposed by the US government in the foreseeable future, he said. In this context, if the European Commission moves ahead with its proposal to ban products made with forced labor next year, this too might have significant implications for solar panel exports destined for Europe. Now, this is purely speculation. I don't think these guys actually really know whether or not these parts come from forced labor areas. There needs to be a bit more research done on that, whether or not this will actually have an effect. It's kind of like media-driven narrative to say, oh no, everything's terrible. You should be worried. You should be concerned. Keep coming back. Keep coming, reading our news. Keep coming on the dopamine cycle. We'll give you more drama. Is it really true that all these solar panels have components made by forced labor? I don't think it is. I've done a little bit of research. Hard to find out really fact from fiction. I don't think the media really have any idea. We really need to know a lot more before we know for sure whether or not this will have an impact. Domestically, the price war is likely to cause temporary chaos among Chinese solar wafer manufacturers due to the imbalance in supply and demand, Lu Ying, an analyst at Shanghai-based Hua Xin Securities, wrote in a report last week, adding that the situation was likely to last until February. The price cuts are likely to affect the profitability of the sector to some extent, but I couldn't care less about the profitability of the sector as long as they keep on sending affordable solar panels all around the world helping the world to move away from fossil fuels to renewables. So what if they make less money? Doesn't matter to me. The price cuts, in my opinion, will actually stimulate a wave of demand that I believe will start the trend. And I mean, when I say the trend, I mean, it'll be like an unstoppable river, an unstoppable river that will drive renewables into the stratosphere. While the windfall profits in China's solar sector due to surging prices are not likely to repeat in 2023, continued technological advancements, greater digitalization, and automation of production reduced material input and economy of scale impact will ensure decent profits for Chinese solar makers, according to Hogwarts. Now, listen to that again and then tell me whether or not it's really relevant whether or not you have forced labor, right? Continued technological advancements, greater digitalization, and automation of production, reduced material input, and economy of scale impact. So realistically, these factories, they're trying to move away from having staff, period. Now, of course, you need staff. They're always gonna need staff. They're trying to move away from manual labor to just automating things as much as possible. Why? Because even if you have forced labor, right, for some of your business, it's still gonna be cheaper to have a machine that builds the machine, that builds the parts, you know what I mean? is still the way of the future to have automation. The Chinese are not stupid. They know that. I mean, they're basically following a lot of what Tesla does when it comes to automation with cars, and they're doing the same thing when it comes to automating their factories. Lower module prices will in particular create demand for large scale ground mounted projects, highly favored by both central and local governments in a push towards a faster decarbonization of China. So, Am I supporting China by making this video? Don't I don't care, to be honest. Yeah, I don't agree with everything China does. There's lots of things I think are bad. You know what they actually did to me? When I was in China, I was writing a blog, a website, and I was putting in there some stuff that I didn't agree with that was going on in China. In fact, I made a video showing some cruelty to animals that I didn't, didn't agree with. They shut down my website. They basically deleted my website. Don't know how they did it. So, I don't, yeah, I mean, it's, it's happened to me. That's a pretty minor thing, but it's happened to me. So I don't really, do I agree with that? No. Do I agree with a lot of things they do? No, I don't. But it's much more important than all of that, realistically, is, um, you know, having a planet we can still live on. 
So we need renewables. If China is the one making them, I'm going to focus on the positive, not the negatives. Yes, there are negatives, but the positive here is this. The world will be a better place for our children if we move to renewables as quickly as possible. Not to mention, the world will save trillions of dollars the faster we can do that. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below and thank you for watching. Bye-bye.